Sagat Janian, and I just wanted to say how excited I am to be here at Paris Auto Speedway. It's a great night tonight. You know, God bless the Kazarians for putting this place together. Uh, reminds me of my old home at Ascot, you know, the place where we launched Evil Knievel's career and launched a bunch of guys. A lot of guys raced there at Ascot, you know, that did real well and won Indianapolis like Mario Andretti and AJ Foyt and the Hunters and Barnelli and a lot of guys. But uh, it's really neat being here. I'm seeing a lot of the old guys here and we're just launching a, uh, speaking of launching, we're just launching a, an apparel line called AscotMotorsports.com so go there and check it out. So that's you guys on Instagram, right? That's Yeah, that's us on Instagram and and also uh, Facebook, Ascot Facebook. But uh, yeah, we invite everybody to go check that out at AscotMotorsports.com but it's really a cool evening. I've seen a lot of guys. I've had to run around and try to collect money that some of them owe me. It's hard to find them. But uh, no, it's a lot of fun here. So thanks. So Evil Knievel was at Ascot. Well, Evil Knievel got his start at Ascot because uh, he came to my dad, J.C. Agajanian, and he wanted to uh, get on our Wide World of Sports show with the big TT race. So that was the first time he ever got on national TV. And he was quite a showman and uh, quite a self-promoter. And he, he pumped himself from there and took off. Next jump was Caesar's Palace. And we all know what happened there. But that was the launch of his career. What other big names were at Ascot? Well, there were a lot of big names at Ascot, including the motorcycle guys like Kenny Roberts and Freddie Spencer and Gene Romero and Dave Aldana and Bubba Schobert and, you know, Skip Van Loen and I don't know, there are, there was a lot of champions. There were just a lot of champions race at that track. It was a wonderful facility because it was located in Southern California. It started in 1957 and uh, a lot of the guys went there. Just there was a very unique configuration and the track was uh, very tacky. It was one of the tackiest tracks. It was a 90 mile an hour track. They said it was 100% traction when you're out there. You run across the track with your shoes on and it's bound to tear the shoe right off your foot. I know it's happened to me before, but uh, it's, uh, you know, where other tracks, uh, they, they look for traction. This one always had traction. And it was uh, because of the moisture maybe from the ocean and the way that we prepared it and all that. But, that was exciting, uh, exciting speedway, and unfortunately, uh, the lease ran out, and we were never able to buy the property or extend the lease. So it ended in uh, Thanksgiving, 1990. Let's talk about your dad. What was he like? My dad was a wonderful man. He was a great family man. He uh, taught us a lot of uh, the right things, how to, you know, respect and how to treat people and be honest and all that. And, um, you know, always told us to turn off the lights. And, you know, he was, uh, he, he taught us the value of a dollar and he taught us to work and he really wanted us all to go to college and we all graduated from USC. He was a wonderful man and uh, miss him a lot, but, um, you know, he was quite an entrepreneur. He was, he promoted races in the late 30s and um, uh, ran sanctioning bodies and then he had race cars that raced across the United States Indy cars and midgets and sprint cars. And they would race across the United States as he promoted races across the United States and, uh, and owned Ascot, obviously. And so he was quite a busy guy. We, we ran a rubbish company that really probably fueled all of the racing expenses. Uh, we picked up the city of Gardena, all the rubbish and all that. But uh, my grandfather started uh, um, picking up garbage from restaurants and taking it to his hog ranch. He bought some hogs and pretty soon he, he was, uh, you know, you know, growing the hogs and selling the hogs and you know getting getting the food for the hogs to pay them to take the food. It was, it was quite a synergistic event. But uh, anyway, uh, that that kind of fueled our business and the rubbish business after that. But mostly, uh, you know, we all did well in the racing business, including my brother Kerry, the oldest brother, who uh, manages uh, a lot of the NASCAR drivers like. Uh, Casey Kane and Tony Stewart and, and uh, Kyle Busch and a lot of those guys in the NASCAR. My brother 
J magazine. He was the voice of Ascot in all the commercials, and he's uh, he's a, does real estate right now. And so, uh, but and, and they promote the race. Uh, it's been 25 years since Ascot closed. The last race was Thanksgiving, uh, and we're going to have uh, the Thanksgiving Grand Prix here in Paris uh, this coming Thanksgiving. Anything else you'd like to add? No, that's, yeah, don't forget to go to ascotmotorsports.com.